Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and today's topic is immediate painting with watercolor. That means we're not really planning anything. I mean, we've got a topic that we're going to use, but we're not actually sketching it out. We're not going to try to make it look like, you know, picture perfect right there, match it. We're, we're trying to get the essence of the subject matter in kind of a fun, fresh way with color, trying to encourage you to, when you've got little bits of time here and there in your studio or your home, or say you're just sitting, you know, waiting for your kids at soccer practice or something like that, and you've got just a little small set, things you can do to get in some practice and some enjoyment, actually, without having to have a giant block of time set aside for a big finished work. So. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So if you're going to play along at home with us and you want to see any of the items that we're going to be using for this episode, the keyword that you will use when you go to www.jerrysartorama.com will be JL135. JL135, you put that in that search bar, you hit enter, it'll bring up all of the items that we are going to be featuring today. Now, um, the image that we used for advertising this episode had a cow on it and you know what Katie I forgot to bring it over so I'm not even okay. sure where it is it's the one that we've uh, put in the bright blue mat no, no. <laughs> okay <laughs> that's fine uh, so a lot of people seem very excited about cows so cows are something kind of fun and whimsical to paint where it doesn't have to look exactly like it um, so this was the one that we had um, a very blue map <laughs> but I liked it. it it worked really well with this so this was just something fun not sketched out just bright and cheerful uh, trying to use a bigger piece of watercolor paper and just get kind of the impression of something down quick and easy so that's what we're going to be doing today and we'll go ahead and stick with cows since everybody was crazy about the cows for some that's reason so, cute. so um so we are using uh, the Lucas set of half pans that's 70 half pans that's a wood box set it's just kind of my set here that I keep in my office at work use it all the time it's, it's a great deal 70 colors with two brushes a porcelain um, palette easy to carry around easy to travel with but 70 colors so um, so we'll be using that just because it's easy the colors are already pre-mixed for this kind of painting that makes it a little bit easier and more enjoyable um, just got a water bucket. I've got a Danube quill brush that I'll be using. Can't hold that against my black. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so it is a synthetic and natural hair uh, quill brush. Keeps a really nice point. Um, has kind of that nice washiness of a traditional squirrel. It does have some Kazan squirrel in it, but it also has some synthetic. So it gives it a little bit of spring and snap and a really nice fine point, which I really enjoy um, for doing this kind of painting. Uh, a size 20 Mimic Kalinsky synthetic um, sable. So we're gonna use that with a, a nice flat with that. It's got just the two brushes that come with the set, just a small golden tack one, in case we need any little tiny touches of color. Uh, we're trying that, I've never tried the Stonehenge Aqua. So we're trying the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. See, branching out, immediate painting, trying something different. It seems like it's got a little bit more tooth from what I'm looking at than like some of the other brands, some than Fabriano or Arches. So I'm really curious how it works with this type of painting or just painting in general. So figured we might as well give it a shot and see what it's like. Uh, also, we are going to be using, theoretically, <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes or want to soften anything. Uh, Creative Mark has a really cool product now um, called Aqualift. It's watercolor lifting sponges. You get seven in this, and I just grabbed what ones hadn't been used as of yet here in the studio. But you can soften edges, you can pull color up. Uh, even if you kind of, a color gets away from you, it's not exactly the one you wanted. You can actually remove a pretty good amount of color, can't you, Katie? Surprisingly, yeah, it was very even staining colors. You can't mm -hmm. completely get rid of them, but you can lift them enough where you can put something else down over it and you really couldn't tell. 
so with dried watercolor that, that it took so much off so cool cool product so um, let me get started um, and we will I'm just gonna mist this and Katie what are these called aqua yeah. mist it really keeps misting yeah. which is nice it doesn't have that finger fatigue of the regular pump ones just a little surprising when you're not expecting yeah. it so new product I didn't have the skew for it yet because I think at the time that I wrote the show we didn't have them in stock but that's a lot of water that would be perfect for misting acrylic so um, so we've got that 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 I don't have on there but we are using I've got one little cow set up let me um, to make this easier for me to see our uh, little fella that we're gonna paint I'm gonna put put one for myself out here because I'm seeing it at an angle and it really skews the the um, make sure that you can still see the one on the table Katie if you would oh. perfect okay Let me go back just a little so it's not shading him there we go all right so just a funny little cow it's really bright colors so we can play with that and, and do some kind of neat stuff um, I'm just going to grab a brush and start. So anybody that's got questions as we're going along, feel free, ladies, to fire away. Um, get my brush is wet now. Also, uh, the Jerry's 8th Annual Portrait Contest is going on. I know that's something that I wanted to remember to tell people. So um, that is, it started now, and it goes to what, April 20th, 12th, 12th. I was going to say 13th, but right, right around that. April 12th um, with the winners announced June 12th so now with this I'm just getting that edge of this cow's face in see what a nice point you can get with this uh, do, 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 do. Pretty sure that's the that's the dates that I had written for the other week. So check it right there. No, I think you should just check it. Yeah, you're right. Check, check. It's January thirteenth to April twelfth. That's what. Okay. All right. So it's already up and going. Uh, Jerry's Artorama.com. Put in keyword self portrait. That'll take you to the contest rules. Um, regulations and the uh, I think that's where you can you can enter directly from there correct yes so um, that's a good way to find out read all about it um, you know while I'm thinking about it we should give people tips because I did notice I did I'm always curious when we get these in and so I already went to kind of see what had been entered and there was this really nice portrait that somebody put a frame in the picture Katie but note note of advice from from Amy and Katie sometimes we will get some of the most beautiful artworks in and nobody bothered to crop it to the artwork edge we don't want to see anybody's chair or the pet cat peeking around the side or or anything or the frame that's in no matter how ornate unless it's part of the actual artwork image itself let's not uh, add that in so um, do your due diligence for cropping. I'm pretty sure it specifies all that in the... It does. In the, um, but, you know, people always forget. So. Trying not to get to this as a color that can... Oh, there we go. That's nice. So wanting to get just some fun, deep... This cow has his tongue in that nostril, so we're going to keep that like that. Do we have any questions so far? No, but as it is a good time to remind everybody at home that there is about a 30 second delay going on um, from stuff you've got going on. So if it seems a little wonky timing wise, just stick with us and we'll get. Yeah. So if you've asked a question, it may just be that it's. It may take a sec. Mm hmm. Putting in some of the shadows here. I'm going to 
Actually, I really like this color, and I'm going to mix it with, I think that's a, ooh, that's very fun with that violet. I think it's a kaput mortem. See, I like just letting some stuff bleed through down and around on this, so. I really like this paper. I'm surprised. Do you always um, set down a sketch with a medium tone of color? Shannon is wondering. Um, you know what? That's a really good question, Shannon, and you're probably right. Shannon asked, do I always set a sketch? Because I did that uh, in the oil one last mm -hmm. week. Uh, in a medium tone of color. I think that ochre is just such a nice neutral color that you can either heat up warm or cool. I think it's probably like my safety go-to. It's a good catch, good catch. Um, I, I don't, I know with oils usually I do toned ground, so it's probably more that it was just kind of that was in that set since that set had a limited amount of um, a limited amount of colors in it. That was kind of like the good safe color. But good eye. They're catching on, Katie. It's scaring me. <laughs> Deepa on YouTube um, wanted to express his thanks for all that he's learned about sketching and drawing while watching you paint. Um, so he tunes in and from your paintings is starting to learn how to sketch and draw and things. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate knowing that that's, that we're doing something that's helping. Ben on YouTube would like to know, is this wet on dry? Yes, this is completely dry. Now some of this I added onto where it was still already wet but this paper was completely dry. I, I like, don't mind doing immediate painting, but I'm not crazy about uh, it being like super wet. That's a little, little too much excitement and out of my uh, wheelhouse for... Not enough control over the yep. water. Yep. <laughs> you said earlier that you liked the paper. Yes. Why, 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 what do you like about it? Uh, I really like the tooth and how the paint settles in it, to be quite honest. It's a really nice, really, really nice, um, it's, it, it's like soaking in evenly, I guess, is a good way to explain. And it, um, I don't know, it's, it seems very vibrant. Mm -hmm. So... I, um, I will say it's probably drying a little bit slower, but I think it's so humid in here from the weird weather we've been having. I don't think that's necessarily a, um, a paper problem. That's a no, I think problem. it's a it's it's a here problem that we have. So um, let's see. Let's get some a little bit brighter. Woo! That is not what I expected. Yeah, Amy would normally swatch this stuff, but she needs to get a chance to. Amanda has volunteered, so maybe we'll have some good swatches for this. I do love to swatch the modern You do. Amanda's swatcherific. It's so zen. I completely get it. Okay. And somebody I noticed last week they were where they were talking about working all the way around the thing. I guess I apparently do this in watercolor too so <laughs> I mean it, it helps to do it in watercolor because then some stuff can dry while you've got other things going on not, not working in one small spot yeah okay. just so stuff can kind of soak in and start to set up there's already something I don't like that I, yeah, I'm gonna break and take out because the eye Ooh, that works really nice on this paper so these little, these little sponges work really uh, the best on cotton paper because cotton paper is sized and is specifically for watercolor. With paper pulp paper, oh, there's a lot of variables that can, uh, and, and it's, just, it's just not, not made for durability, right? So uh, 
these sponges work great on cotton watercolor paper. So that kind of took out that stuff that I didn't like there. That would be really fun to even take that and like pull some stuff, you know, mm -hmm. left and right. I'm going to try to, yeah, but it's kind of wet around the eyes. Let's um, keep working on the ears some. That's, if those flow together, that's, that's fine. Nick on YouTube was asking if you've ever used, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Shizen paper? S-H-I-Z-E-N? I'm guessing that's a type of, Nick, is that a type of water, uh, or, or like rice paper, I'm guessing? It sounds like a type of rice paper or printmaking paper just from the name. And I probably would not because that's, it's not going to, have the same absorbency. You get a lot of buckling and stuff with that type of paper. It's not to say that it can't be used and you might not really enjoy it, but it's just, I, I, I'm weird about stuff and I prefer my, Katie laughs. I like my rice papers and stuff for printmaking and because printmaking paper is so valuable to me, it, it's hard for me to use them for other things that if that makes any sense. I know that's weird, but. Amy, can you talk about the makeup sponges on Facebook? We have a couple questions about them. They are Aqualift watercolor lifting sponges. They are not makeup sponges. They're not the, the uh, it, it sounds like people are, they look similar to like the, the thing that you would use to do. I am guess, right, Katie, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yes, they look Concealer. like. Concealer? Yes. They also look yes. like the pastel sponges. They're not, it, it, those are really, more closed cell kind of feeling. These are more open cell. If you if you've ever used feeling. yes, if you've ever used a Mr. Clean eraser, mm -hmm. it's very similar feel and composition, but it doesn't have that thick goo that's in it that you can feel in the soapiness. Um, it's not. It definitely is not a makeup sponge. It would not um, hold that thickness of stuff. So. I mean, I don't know if a makeup sponge would work for this. I would think it'd be too, it wouldn't absorb enough. Because mm -hmm. that's designed to work with a thicker, heavier stuff, right? It's designed stuff, more right? for application, not removal. You heard it from the makeup mm -hmm. guru, Katie. Which I am definitely not. I am the last person you want to go to from, unless it's, this is, do these colors look good together? Mm -hmm. I'll be like, yeah. How do you put this on? I got no clue, unless it's theater pan makeup, which is not even, that's basically just shellac. All right. All right, this I think around the nose is drying enough where we can get a little bit of some, let's find something that'll make a nice little pink. That might be a little bright. Diane would like to know if the sponges work better than using the watercolor brush to remove excess water. Um, it, it's what different. Color? It works, but it's very different. I know exactly what she's saying. Um, if you're really well practiced at using a watercolor brush, that's great for small applications. Um, or are you going to get the... Okay, so today we, we tried filming it, and it was one of the first times I'd really gotten a good a good chance to to try it um, out you can go over really large areas with it because it's so um, so much more absorbent watercolor brushes are helpful for smaller areas uh, but even like natural sponges don't work quite the same as these do Ooh, I like that how that kind of bled through Yeah. Okay, so so this is a staining color, but you're st still able to lift it a pretty good amount if you were just trying to lift it out or lighten it. That took it down to the paper. Um, and this is on Fabriano. Another kind of nice staining color that pulled up pretty well. This was softened. These were had bled together. That's then softened just to show that that would be able to soften a color out. This as well. 
there was this hard line like this through it with kind of that bleed, kind of the, the harder bleeding edge like this was right there. So that was to show how well you can soften with that. Uh, and then I think the big piece in, in, in here, isn't it? Mm, this, the big, this was the fun part. That's going across all the colors in, uh, which set was that? The Mission Gold set. Mm -hmm. So you can really, that's just doing a quick run through, not trying to go back and lift up in between colors and everything just to show, you know, it took what, three, four swipes across, but it, because it was picking up so much pigment because these paints are so pigmented. And this was done almost a week ago. So it had been on this paper dry for a week, which is crazy. When I said that and we were video videoing yeah. it, I was like, oh, maybe I should have tried this first. That was maybe not the best idea, but it worked, so. Can you they pick up the paint better? Yes. Instead of where the brush kind of pushes it around if you're not too yes. careful? Yes. You have to really, it has, takes a very practiced hand to do mm -hmm. it with a brush. Because that was, that was my preferred method. Um, but I had a very specific brush that I would use for that, too. That's fun. A little bleedy color there. Hopefully that answered her question about the... I think if you already have uh, a really good hand at picking up with a brush, that would be like an even more awesome tool because you've already got that kind of know-how. up too high so I'm gonna pull that down a little. Karen on YouTube is liking the personality that this cow is starting to show on the painting. Yeah it's fun colors. I'm just pick I, there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing I'm just mixing and trying because there's never really is there really a rhyme or reason <laughs> with me half the time. Just trying some different things mixing some different colors in some cases, this is better that I've never swatched this because it's giving me a little bit more of a... Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Um, I feel like we should close this in, but I kind of like that, so I don't know if I really want to do that. I might just leave it. Shannon on Facebook brought up a good point. Uh, with that set, if you deplete any of the colors, we sell them all open stock, so you can get them in either a new pan or in a tube. Yes, that's the beauty of uh, sets like this, especially a set coming from a company that's a company that they already sell all that stuff, because it's really fun to buy watercolor sets, and I know that all four of us here have been guilty of this buying sets and you're so excited about it and then you get it and you're like oh they don't they don't sell open stock how am i going to mm -hmm. replace this when it's 100%. all gone and and it's something you don't think about in that kind of joy and zeal of getting that new that new set and then you're kind of sunk you know so that's that's what's nice about something like this is you you would have i mean this is in my office there's not really a color that's some of the blues and apparently some of the earth tones have been started to wear down some, but not like a lot, you know? Um, and this is, we've had this set, what, since last year, Katie? Mm-hmm. So. And we sell the um, empty pans as well that fit in there, don't we? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that they would just. You could make, yeah. Yeah, if you have a favorite color and another brand, you could well, one. Well, okay, right. so there's this row. And there's this row. So if you want oh, to do something like uh, buy empty pans and like buy some Daniel Smith colors or something, you know, some of the, or, uh, you know, some of those um, Primatex colors that do some really fun, wonderful things. Mm -hmm. You could, you could add that onto, oh, now I want to go do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've got that little crazy set that I made that has all those. 
on um, like the on serpentine and stuff yeah. where it's made out of kind of gems and their mineral colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really. Amy, could you talk about the brush you're using a little bit with uh, for Sheila and Lori on Facebook? Lori yes. was wondering if you have any tips and tricks for mastery control of the quill brush. Uh, if, you, if this was a regular quill brush, I would tell you, you, you have some work cut out for you. This is not a regular quill brush because it's got that, um, I mean, look at the point that I can keep with this. Look at, I, I can get some really fine little line work in it. See how that's, I can carve right here, holding it a little bit, kind of choking up on the thing. You can't do that with normal quills. Um, normal quills are t tend to be just squirrel only. This has the Kazan squirrel. What the, re what the beauty of this brush is, it's designed to inflate with water almost, I guess. I mean, which is not really, that doesn't make any sense because that means air and then water. It's designed to expand. It gets really large. It's got a big fat belly, the Super piece thirsty. here. Super thirsty which usually what that does is the more it absorbs, the kind of looser and uh, kind of less wieldy that point gets to it. With this, because it's got a good blend of the natural squirrel, so it's nice and thirsty, but they vary the synthetic um, filaments in sizes, so it performs like a natural hair with that, but it can keep that beautiful, I'm gonna, I hate doing this because I, I really like this, but. Hold on, are you gonna use it as well? Huh? Oh, here, I've got one. I just don't want to get it wet. Okay, so look. With this big fat brush, or I can do something large. I can take it, soak up. Let's get a color that's really bold and bright and easy to see. I can soak up a lot of paint with one. That was touching down on that one time look at how much that one small brush just put down okay so don't think of it as okay this this um you know all these brushes are going to be like this all quills are not going to be like this this is a very unique style quill a lot of quills that are made with the natural hair again get you know what i had one over here but i'm not sure oh no you know hold on Okay, so this is a really tiny one, and this is natural hair. This was the one that was in my little, um, the one. my thing from home. So this is a small one. This is all natural. Notice how, oh good, you can see it pretty well, how rounded that is for the tip when it's full of water. I'm going to gently lay this down here. Look. I think you just convinced Jenna Howell that she needs this brush yeah. in her life. <laughs> look at that difference between the two. So if I get this wet and I put it in that green, and I pull it along next to. I can kind of whittle it or even blot a little excess out, but that's the finest I'm gonna get on a much smaller brush. And see how, now that I've pushed down, look how it's kind of bent to one side. Can you see that? There to this. Is that easy to see? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's because that's soft and does not snap back into place where this has that See that mm -hmm. fiber where it snaps back These are when they came out with these I was like I, I only ever wanted to use squirt like Almost wasn't interested in Kalinsky anymore because this is so much more absorbent than Kalinsky. Let's hope that didn't okay good I didn't pull it You know um, It's fun stuff Marilyn on YouTube would like to know is that brush tip referred to as a cat's tongue? No. A cat's tongue is specifically shaped like this. Um, there's probably one in maybe the Isby drawer. And, uh... um, hold on. We'll see if we can't find one to... Also, I was just looking up this... Uh, watercolor quill brush for Jenna mm -hmm. and the three quill brush set plus a bamboo roll-up is on sale for $79.99 for three brushes and a brush holder. 
that's that's a that's a substantial deal. I don't know if we have one. Um, and who would have it? I I don't. Um, here, the best thing I can do is this. Okay, so a cat's tongue brush does this. I'm just gonna use some paint and do it. It comes, it gets firm in the middle and then comes out like this. That's gonna be the hair. And then your ferrule's gonna go down. <laughs> wow, that is like the worst. Well, I'm just trying to get the shape. And all that's designed to do is to get these little kind of little touches and then when you pull it out, right? Touches and pull it out. See how that's not shaped like that? That's fatter. It, it's it's strange, but you'll you'll just have to Google cat's tongue brush. It's not a. To me, a cat's tongue brush, unless you're going to do like something super detailed, like floral painting or something, is a. I hate to say this, and cat's tongue people are going to be like, "Shut up!" It is a waste of your money. Something like this can give you um, a lot more bang for your buck and be able to do a lot more things. It's just for floral people that have been trained with very specific kind of. Um, it's a very specified tool. It is. And it's great. It's a great brush in the hands of somebody that knows how to use it. But it's again, it's knowing what you're doing with it kind of. Lucy on YouTube would like to know, do you have a preference between this brush and the Mimic brush? Uh, if Okay, so just you want to know, like, if which I could have only prefer? one, which would be, like, if it came down to you're on a deserted island and you can keep one of these two watercolor brushes. She didn't phrase it quite like that, but I'm assuming okay. that's the intent. Um, wow, I'm going to get slammed by a lot of people, but I, I would take this one. It, it just, it, you can do more with it. Uh, it's, it, it holds so much more water. She, what her question was, was with the Mimic Kalinske, which there's, there's a round in this, obviously. Um, and the, the quill, which, if, which one I prefer, which I, I, I prefer to have both. <laughs> if that, if that, you know, anybody would like to, I mean, every, every artist right there is going to go, yep, mm-hmm. I understand that, but just, uh, it's, if, if there could be only one, you know, going on a trip and I've got room for one, that's the brush that I'm going to take instead. All right. So I think this little fun cow's kind of come to his end of, we want to try to do one more, don't we, Katie? Mm-hmm. What do you think? So, but see how it just, it's loose, it's fresh, it's fun. It doesn't have to look just like anything. It's just laying some color down. Now, obviously, if I had a hair dryer, I could go in more. I could, you know, round out the ears and put the tag in and blah, blah, blah. But I like just that quick impression of this little guy. Wish it was drier in here. That would make it a lot easier to. My bad, Amy. She wasn't asking about the regular Mimic Kalinsky. She was asking about the Mimic Blue Squirrel with the that blue gray oh, handle. This one, the Danube. Um, that is designed to be a very synthetic, straight up squirrel feel brush. It will give. Uh, it has a little bit of spring and snap, and it will. It is pretty thirsty for the most part, but it's just not the same. Um, this this just is is a very. Which okay so. In reality land, you look at the prices of the two, and this is slightly more, so you know that that's probably going to give you a little bit kind of that higher echelon performance. And not that anything's wrong with the, those Mimic Squirrels. I love those, too. And I actually have some in a travel set I, that I just haul around just because if something happens and I lose the set, I have a little set of watercolors and brushes that if something happens and they're gone bye-bye forever... I'm not going to be upset about it because they're easy to replace. Okay. Oh, his head is cut off. <laughs> oh, 
I guess we could just focus on that guy. Do we want to just do that? I just liked the profile of the one. He was a big, I mean, I, mean, I guess I could just do, you, you just wouldn't see the, the head. over under the pan so that, so I can that move his him. head is visible. All right. This one we're gonna do some, oh, ta-da! Yes, I, people would rather see cows than Amy, believe me. All right, um, we're gonna do just something fun and different with this. Let's, let's take some blues. Okay, y'all ready for this? Just so they know at home, you don't have anything sketched out on that, not even nope. lightly. You're just going for it. I'm just just playing. No clue. I'm probably gonna go over a lot of the. Nothing sketched out. We're just oh, I love that. Sherry said that she's starting to take weekly notes and she's sketching along some with you. Awesome. Oh, she should share some of her stuff if she's yes. comfortable yes. in our Facebook group. Facebook Live. Carrie's Live. You mean you want to tell them about the Facebook group for just... Yes. Okay, so we've got a really awesome group of people that watch the show and that have... Uh, that's it's, So you go to, to Facebook. And you go to groups. If you are not a member, you type in Jerry's Live. Unfortunately, you do have to be a member of Facebook itself to participate. Okay, you can't not be a member of Facebook, but you could create an account where you don't, you know, look at other things and you only log on to, to be part of the group. Um, but join the group. You have to answer the question, well, my cow is really short-backed. <laughs> That's probably why. Okay, so we can... We can Maybe fix this. So this is why talking and painting at the same time don't always work for me. This is We're just, challenging your brain. This needs to be <laughs> back here. I didn't angle if that should be where the leg is. That's okay. We'll see. M maybe we can fix it. We'll see. Um, so sign up for the group and people post all sorts of wonderful art in progress. They post questions. Um, it's just a really fun, supportive group. Even some people, you know, we got people at professional levels. We got people at amateur levels. We got people that are just starting out, right? So it's a good way to have some support, especially if you live somewhere where you just don't, you don't have access to any art groups. Um, And that's really awesome that, did you say it was Diane that's doing this? Who was doing it? Sherry. Sherry, okay, Di the Diane's question was earlier. That's really awesome. Good for you for taking some time for yourself and. That's what we kind of hoped when we first started doing this is that everybody would get to participate along with us. Yes. So and hopefully the demo type of stuff helps for that. Okay. All right. Somewhat fixed. <laughs> not, to, not to my like. But how what are we did we say on the last one? You're not I'm supposed to fall in love with nope. these. They're for practice. That's right. They are not precious. They are for learning. Yep. I agree. All right. I really want some. I love this. This has got to be a phthalo green. So we're gonna take a little bit of that. And we're gonna... BJ on YouTube is loving this live watercolor demo. And I'm checking to see what we have in our current catalog of episodes, but do we have any more watercolors coming up anytime soon? Uh, we will at some point. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of different stuff that's gonna be 
kind of traipsing along. I think we even have a, um, we'll do some more watercolor. I know that we've got Andrew. Um, he will be here in, I believe, May or June from Savoir Fair, who came and did the last episode with us. It, he's coming on um, Pink Day, National Pink. So we decided that that might be fun, that we That'll would do something fun. fun with that and maybe even work with some pink colors and wear pink and just be silly. So um, That's also a good point, though. If there's anything they want to see, yeah, let us know in the comments if there's something or, you guys would or like to see. Or in the group. And put it in the group. Put it in the comments. Let us know. Yep. We can't. Uh, also a good time just for anybody who isn't aware, if they go to the Jerry's Live, if they put in the Jerry's Live keyword on the website, it'll take you to the calendar of everything we have upcoming, where they can also sign up for reminders if they need. Yes, yeah, sign up for alerts so that you know when all this stuff is coming down the pike. And then if there's certain episodes that you just don't want to miss, you're already in, ready to go. Um, oops, that was not my blotting rack. <laughs> try to maybe give this cow a little bit more shadow. See, I like how all that's blending together. That just looks really fun and fluid and relaxed. I need to figure out a way to kind of do it the other way. Vicki just mentioned on YouTube that she was following along with you and doing a paint along from home. Nice. See, that's where this type of format with this type of just something really loose, that's why we're talking about this is when you've got a few minutes, this is the perfect you don't feel, like Katie just said, any ownership over this. It's just something fun. It's practice. So I think it I, maybe encourages us a little to be a little less dramatic about it. And or overthink it. Yes. I have the hardest time with that. You overthink things too much. Well, so see, my guy was too long, and I really didn't like it. But I made a couple changes. He's still a little shorter back than he should be. But that's me and the, that's me and my structure thing. But I really like the, okay, so, so now once that starts drying a little more, I would really want to maybe put in some gray values since there's no light on his face here, but this is still really wet and I'm afraid if I put too much on there, I like some of this blending that's starting to happen. I don't want too much blending. So what I'm going to do is take... <coughs> Ooh, that's definitely phthalo because it packs a punch. Mm -hmm. Let me try to... Bonnie's loving that green with the blue. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so let's grain down this green. So we're going to put some shadow under... Mr. Cow here and let some of that blue come down under him encourage it to kind of come down in there see how it kind of just all of a sudden cements him. You didn't see his feet, but it kind of definitely cements him. Um, let's work on this little guy's face over here. I like how he's kind of peeking around the back. Do we have time? We have about 15 minutes, yep. We got time, all right. Renee on Facebook said that you always inspire her to try something that she's been afraid to do. Good, thank you, Renee. Do it. Do it. Don't do be it. afraid. <laughs> Don't be. That's a good point, too. If Going back to the, you know, people are, it's not precious, those type of things. If it's something you knew that you're afraid to do and you're afraid of 
a lot of people don't want it out for other people to see and are the yes. and stuff of it. Get yourself a sketchbook. Get a watercolor sketchbook. You can do this. Close it. Nobody has to ever see it. It doesn't have to see the light of day again, but it gets the practice in for you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I decided I wanted a little bit of bleak, so looks like that would kind of be fun there for some shadow. Because what I can do is go back with the sponge once it's dry and soften that. Mm -hmm. Um, let's get him an eyeball. One of our viewers on YouTube is saying that they absolutely love this painting. Um, but it's a, a username as opposed to a name name, so I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. What does it look like? S-O-W-V-55. Oh, well. Sounds good. Yep, seems like that worked. I'm gonna echo this. Do you find it easier like to soften those edges with that um, sponge than a brush? Um, it's just a little more precise than you. It's okay. So, what? And, and the real reason that I had this other um, here's a milk cap. Um, this is easy to edge with. Um, you can take it, really blot it out. So if I wanted to soften that, see how that kind of just picked that up a little bit and made that edge disappear? Right there. So I like that hard edge, but if you wanted to come in, because that's sharp, you can kind of use it and soften and pull, even pull some of that kind of down like that. So see how that just took that edge away and made it almost kind of floaty? where it's just starting out. Um, so let's, by the same token, let's try the sponge and we'll try softening down. Let's slide this up just a little. Down here. Okay, see how that's a harder edge there? See how quickly that totally, I mean, you can even kinda use it to pull it down. I wanted to take it and make a little bit of texturing with it there like that so either one it's it's more about the practice this is a good these type of tools are really helpful it's good to practice with them first before you have like a finished artwork you're like oh my god I need to what well, seriously because that's sometimes not the best time to no so yet another time to that's good to you know be practicing with some of this a bunch of people on Facebook are talking about how you're inspiring them to give watercolor a try. And that brings up a great point that we're having a watercolor sale right now. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. So, yes, perfect time to get yourself a set. And really, although you can mix watercolors, you know, you want to get something where you've got your... Go back and watch our color theory shows. You want your warm and cool mixing colors at minimum, right? And some earth tones. Yellow ochre. Why would Amy say that? Because you can use it for anything. A burnt sienna and burnt umber, maybe, or even raw sienna and raw umber. Or seem like they're a little more kind of the preferred for watercolor, but I still kind of like the other ones because I come from an oil background. Um, and uh, it, as much as I hate to say it, over the years, I've become fond of Payne's Gray. Oh, I, I hated it. I was like, that's really blue. That's just a gray blue. But you can knock so much, you know, out, like, cool something off so quickly with it. It's very nice. So, so that's, yes, those are good, good kind of minimums to have for that. And if anybody's wondering, the links to all of the previous episodes are in the description on both YouTube and Facebook, so you can find them there anytime. Yes, we have, guys, this is episode JL135. That means there's 134 of these somewhere in front of you. So if you're new and you didn't realize that we were crazy and we've been doing this for forever, it seems like, there's a way, and we've done other watercolor episodes. There's uh, two documents. One's got all of the stuff, um, 
that's from uh, that's just in chronological order, right? So, and then the other one's got by medium. So you can go in and look for watercolor specific ones to be able to learn a little bit about it. Um, some are demos, some are, you know, just like this kind of stuff. There's, it's a good way to catch a bunch of different fun things. If we have time to do that one, little cow's peeking around. Yeah, but we got 10 minutes. Let's, let's knock him out. You can do it. You can do it. All right. So do we want to make him like warm colors for something fun? Mm -hmm. Or do we want to just stick with the blue? We can make him just greens maybe. This is so pigment laden. There's a lot of color already in my wash bucket and which usually kind of freaks me out. So I'm just going to pretend that it's not. Is this kind of, no. That's... One of our regulars on YouTube, Susan, she thinks that this painting is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And Diane thinks you should go for color. <laughs> go for color. All right, so we got this guy over here. He's a little. Ooh, Angela says orange. Oh, I already started with green brown. I'm oh. sorry, Angela. I thought maybe it would make him look further back if he's kind of peeking around. Ah! <laughs> Getting out the sponge. You know what? We are going to try orange. I don't like what this looks like. <laughs> While you're working, can you think of maybe your favorite sketchbook to use watercolor? My favorite sketchbook to use watercolor specifically. Okay. So this would be for this kind of stuff, not something for finished mm -hmm. work, right? Of course. I really like the Stillman and Burn that are the really super heavy duty um, paper. They've got a spiral bound and a hard bound and the spiral bound's nice because it lies flat which is easy for doing the watercolor and you can work on both sides then. And it's heavy enough where as long as you're not soaking the mess out of uh, your paper you can use both sides to like keep going on both sides. Then Strathmore makes that one that's cotton, which the Stillman and Burn isn't, but it's still really substantial. It's like, I think the equivalent to like 110 pounds or something. Um, um, and there's, there's like smooth press, cold press, all the presses you could want, textures you could want with that, whites, ivories. Um, Strathmore's visual, were they visual journals, mm -hmm. Katie? Th that are for mixed media. There is one that's 100% cotton, and I want to say that might be 110 or 120 pounds, and that's spiral bound, and that you can do some, we've even stitched through, I think, and it's cotton, so it's super durable. Um, either of those, I would say, would be just like the ideal, and, and when I travel, I do carry a sketchbook and do watercolor in it, ink and watercolor, so um, both of those ones are ones that I've used a lot before, so hot colors is that what you're saying yeah there's some kind of like rosier also you should know that Facebook is having sort of a love fest about having you as an instructor at um, Art of Carolinas that they want me to more or kind just that they, that they loved it oh Ginger said start planning now because you can find out the classes in July yeah they're all pretty hype about it it's it's so much fun and it's the best way to meet everybody and then we do a cool meet and greet so all the viewers can see each other and hang out and make friends and it seems like it's just 2020 is going to be the 20th that's insane it's gonna be a party everybody that's needs to come. insane <laughs> art of the carolinas is such a fun cool place that's where i would like to go I, every year i'm like yay i'm teaching workshops oh i can't take workshops because I, I in, in teaching, I don't have time to do them, but there's there's so many things you can learn all in one place. It's just, I want to take one of those cold wax ones so bad. I Every might, year time? Yes. Mm -hmm. I might have to do a day where I just, the nice just thing do about that because it's, it's so many mediums yes. under one roof. Yes. That if you're 
interesting and finding something new or finding a new style, it's a great place to go and try some new things. Yes. Get some great deals on some supplies because you're not going to find them cheaper. So many of our viewers that I've become friends with over the years, it's so hilarious to see the th things that they've stocked up on. It's just, it's, it's like, and they'll be like, they'll send me a picture and be like, look, remember when I bought this when we wa were walking around? Cause I'll go help people find things or answer questions or whatever. And it'd be like, Jen, <laughs> be like, look, I'm finally using this. That's because you bought 9,000. I mean, she didn't buy 9,000, but she can, she stocks up and she gets to all of her stuff. It's so cool. And she's the reason why I want to take that class because she's taken it what twice now mm -hmm. two different ones with him and it just looks like so much fun I want this to be brighter the face is kind of blurry because the where I pulled the watercolor up it's not dry enough so sorry we're gonna keep muddling through though Let's see if we can get him It's like melting. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, come on. We're just going to put some dark stuff there. There we go. About five minutes out. Okay. So if anybody has any final last questions, go ahead and get them in now. So. We're not getting messed up with that little delay. Yep. Make sure we get get Thank time you. in for your last yep. thoughts, questions, etc. Okay, this cow is bull legged because I grossly misjudged the I can tell I did not eat lunch today. You know what? Things got too crazy and I never got to go eat lunch. It's starting to wear on me. See, this is something you could just pick only a few colors to use. Like, I would never just go paint blue. Well, okay. I take that back because I guess I did paint that other blue cow. So, liar, liar, pence on fire. <laughs> you know, pick some colors that just only use specific ones. See, see how, you know, fun it is just to try something new. Give something a go you wouldn't have normally considered in a a color scheme. What? Doing something funny. My. Lori said, "How do I?" She was asking if you had any questions. She said, "How do I hide all the supplies I keep buying?" <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing because I have to do that with Amazon boxes. Uh huh. You rent a storage unit. <laughs> but then you don't have your brushes there when you need them. Tiffany on YouTube has declared that all cows should be blue henceforth. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Would you, uh, if you were using this as a like permanent work, would you spray or finish it with a protectant glaze or anything? Uh, it, I, I put watercolor under, under a, uh, under glass. I wouldn't with this. I mean, if I was, if this was in a sketchbook and I was just really worried about somehow it getting wet or something like that, I might put some Solivar over it, uh, which is a spray that, that Liquitex makes. It seems like it, it's, if you're very gentle and delicate in how you do it, it will work pretty well with. Um, you know, light coats. You can see as I'm doing a face, it's just getting foggier and foggier because it's it's so wet. It's just. Um, I actually it, yeah. really like the look of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess he looks further back because he's mm -hmm. he's uh, the water's so dirty it's picking up the color. Mm -hmm. Rude John on YouTube. 
would like to know if we could get a yellow sky before we head out for the evening. A yellow sky behind yellow said sky. cattle. Um, we, can we do it on the first one? I think that would look so cute with the first one. Go for it. Do it. All right, John. Since we had all of our cool colors there, we're going to, it's going to probably buckle our paper some, but let's. He also mentioned that you forgot something in your other painting. Oh. I forgot something in my other painting. Yes. What, what was that? That's cow patty. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with enough too. Right here, so. <laughs> Not doing the cow patties too. All right. I think we should do a, oh, I would really like a sunshiny yellow because this is so warm. Let's do the lemony yellow. Let's pick a couple of these. Oh, I'm making a mess. Okay. I have run out of, of mixing areas to... Let me do this so it's not so shaded. There we go. All right. This is actually a really good idea, John, because then I can kind of... Where did my other guy go? Cow, come back. Where's my cow? Um, can kind of figure out where the edge of my ear was and kind of outline that. So it almost gives it kind of a See how much water that brush holds? It's just crazy. For artists who might be intimidated by a particular color, Nick, for example, mentions that yellow always looks garish on his paintings. Uh, Nick, the best way to control yellow is look at the color scheme you're using. This, we just went with a really kind of lemony it's it's pretty kind of greenish undertones right which i wasn't real wild on doing but i thought that it would be a nice contrast i think it works mm -hmm. now yellows get out of control because you're using something that like this would not work as a background with other colors it would it would be it would look even colder and greener and creepier um so look at the color temperature that's probably the best thing to do Test it out separately on a, I always keep a scrap piece of paper. You guys could see this, not see this off camera, but I do that to mix and see what colors might look good with others while it's still wet. Then I'm not making mistakes on this paper where, you know, some, some colors are uh, heavily staining and you don't want to then not be able to potentially you know, pull them up if it just does not end up doing what you want it to do. So good to test first, good to look at your color scheme that you already kind of have going and, and make decisions accordingly. There, see that looks really super, super happy. I like it. Who was that that, John? Good call, Nick. John. I thought oh, it was yeah, rude John. John was the yellow background, yeah. Rude John was sweet and came up with a really <laughs> awesome idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, we have hit the hour mark. We've actually gotten a lot accomplished. I am proud of us, even though I'm slightly terrified that we got all this all in one fell swoop. Uh, so, again, 8th Annual Portrait Contest. Keyword self-portrait on jerryzardorama.com. $5,000 in prizes. That's an, an awesome thing. 30 jury picked finalists and 30 popular vote so you can get in there as a popular vote it's awesome it's a, a stage there's two rounds yes. of voting yeah, well yes those are separate and then from the two together mm -hmm. comes said winners with yeah. the prizes so um so consider joining uh entering joining join the facebook group enter <laughs> the contest so, all right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Next week, we're doing this again, but with charcoal. But I'm doing pencils so that I don't end up head to yeah. toe looking 
looking like the little chimney sweep because that would happen. So, uh, so join us next week with the charcoal immediate drawing episode and we'll see what fun we can get into then. Take care.